this video we're going to have a look to see just how easy it is to set up a website using Oxygen Builder. So we've installed a pretty standard WordPress installation here. As you can see, the default theme has been applied. And now we're going to install Oxygen. So we head over to plugins. I've already uploaded Oxygen. It's the only plugin installed on the website at the moment. And I'm now going to activate the plugin. Now, when I activate the plugin, I'm asked if I would like to download a pre-made website or a blank install. If it's your first installation, I would head over to the pre-made website and you do have an option here to browse the library. Inside the library, you will see several pre-made websites. So the websites include all the sub pages that you would need for that website. So here we have the design sets and you'll see that there are quite a few options. Um, for example, just if you're looking for something more specific, we have a dentist, financial, a one pager, a winery, a B and B. Uh, some, if you're a freelance um, person, we have a freelance site, flight school, conference, hosting, music teacher, brewery, a fancy freelancer, um, Proteus and Wedding. So those are just a few out of the box themes that you can choose. And as I said, they come with the sub pages. In this case, we're going to use the default install, which would be the Atomic. So if you want to have a look at any of these prior to installing, simply click on the view demo, a new tab opens. And in that tab, you can see the website. And as you navigate to any of these, pages you'll see that they are complete pages made up with all the design elements already so you would just then need to edit those pages so if we head back and we choose the default install which is probably good for most uh, generic companies um, as an outline we install confirm and install and as it installs you'll see that it runs through a couple of items here on this uh, button just to keep you up to date with what's going on. We let that run. And then as soon as that's run, you'll be redirected to this page. Now, at this point, you can go and navigate your website. So I'm going to close that demo page. And this was our website. Now, when I refresh this page, you'll see that I have a different look and feel. So we have the basic outline of the website now available. Let's head back to the uh, template section. And inside template, you'll see that I have the inner content, other single, the archive, blog post, page, main. So these are just some of the templates needed for um, the website to, to work. So to go through them, the main is generally the header and footer content. The page would be the page contact content area. The blog post would be the blog post content area. The header and footer, of course, would be pulled in from the main. So you only make your header and footer once. The archive, once again, would be the, um, the posts that are pulled into the archive in a grid view. Um, if you want to use a different layout for the singular layout, you have this other singular. And then we also have one for the inner content and inner content is the content that you would insert, not in Oxygen, but that you would insert inside the standard WordPress editor. So to have a look at the pages that were created, we'll head over to pages. And here you'll see that we have a lot of pages that were created for us during the install. So for example, if we want to go and have a look at the contact us page, we can simply head over to content and let's view that in a new tab. And here we have the contact page. If we want to edit the details on the contact page, we would simply then head over to Oxygen and we could edit with Oxygen directly from the front end or we could head over to the editor. Just disable those items. What I like to do is disable the full screen mode from WordPress 
and you'll see there's no content here in the content area. In this case, we would edit with oxygen. So if we continue with our train of thought here, let's go and edit that page using oxygen. So oxygen is going to be loading. You'll see the little gear. And once oxygen is loaded, this is the interface that you'll see. So quite easy to edit some content. You would just simply click on the content item and on the left hand side, you'll see that you have a number of options that appear that will allow you to edit these items. Now, when it comes to the text color, the font sizes, the font weights, the, the tag, which in this case makes that an H2 heading, there is a central um, area where you can manage all font sizes and all colors. So the only time that you really need to adjust the text color here or the font weight is when you want to create something that isn't standard within the theme. But to give you the kind of idea of what's available when it comes to what you can edit, this would be the primary edit points. However, if we head over to advanced, we have a whole lot of other items that we can edit around this. And that is um, from straightforward items like a background. And the background, you might want to do a color or an image. You might want that background to be fixed or scrolled. And you'll see that I can apply that to just to the heading. What I can also do, if I look at my heading, you'll see here in this breadcrumb here in the top left that it's wrapped within a div. And if I click on that div, I can now edit the entire space around. And you'll also see now that my primary has changed to show me uh, the additional values or formatting options that are available for a div tag. For example, if I wanted to center everything, I could just click on the center. I could align to the right. I could justify. Or if I want to go back to default, just deselect. And it goes back to the original default setting. I could adjust the size of that, uh, the width. So bigger or smaller, I'll leave that at 50. And of course, then in the advanced area, there's a whole lot more that I can do. For example, uh, we have the size and spacing and there you saw the 50% in terms of the width, but it also has a padding setting here that I can use. So I can set the padding within the item and simply by selecting, I can apply all and then it applies that padding to all the elements within that div or if I remove it, I can then remove all the padding inside that div as well. If I wanted to add a special effect, I could go to effects and what I might want to do is an animate on scroll. Uh, I might want to do a box shadow, for example. Simply go to the box shadow, select the, uh, the transparency or the color for your box shadow then set a horizontal or a vertical offset, then set a blur, and you'll see now that it is an inset uh, shadow, or I can set it to be an outset, and if I click outside of the page, now you'll see that that has been applied. If I go back to that element, head over back to effects, I can come in now and edit that box shadow. For example, if I wanted the shadow to appear below, Simply change the offset there to 15, and now the shadow appears to run only at the base of the item and not at the top. So a couple of things that you can really do quickly to highlight the content on your page. As you can see here, the box shadow has been applied to this element to make the contact form that you would insert stand out. So if I'm not happy with those changes, I can then in the top right hit the undo button and then go back to the original setting for this page. So it's that easy to do the undo is just to click the undo button at the top of the page. If I'm done with my edits, I do have an option to head back to the admin of this page or to the front end. What I can also do though, as I said earlier, is manage all the assets in one place. If I go to settings, I can go to global styles and here I can set the global colors or theme colors. So the colors that have been set here are outside of the standard theme. So these are specific to the atomic layout. And if I'm not happy with that 
color for example I can change it and all the elements that use that color would then change and the same goes for all the headings as you go down and each one will give a description of the color and the color um, uh, reference number if I want to add a color very easily I can add a color I can give it the name that I want I can then select the color from the color selector let's leave it at red and then I simply add the color now red is part of the color scheme which means that if I now head over to colors you will see that I have the red and if I hover over the red I have a new color so I can select the color here and now the color is selected alternatively let's add that to the text so if I chose that text I could quite easily then change the color of the text and if I'm assigning a new color which hasn't been used before so if I decided I want to go with a green and it's not a color that I've added to my list of colors I can quickly do that by selecting that color globe and I can say neon green and then I can select the color set that I wanted to belong to so I'm going to say atomic I can add and now you can see that the color has been allocated and it now appears in the list of colors available and of course then I can manage colors by clicking on manage colors and you'll see that the menu on the right changes but there are a lot of other settings that you can you can change as well so if we go back that was just settings we have fonts you can choose any font from Google so if I take my font here and I change it to Roboto you'll see that all those elements that use that font have changed so quite easily open sans so the whole website now has been updated with those new fonts so I only have to change it in one place and all the fonts are applied and if I don't like the change simply hit the undo and we're back to where we were when we started if I keep on going you'll see that the color is also then updated and eventually we return to the original set of colors if I then go back to colors and we go back to our atomic palette and I scroll down you'll see that the green that I added is not visible but the red that I added is here because we didn't undo the creation of the red but we undid the creation of the green color so when you undo it updates all uh, when you hit the under it'll update any aspect that you've changed on your website whether it's in settings or if it's live on the website of course you can also then look at your headings so if you're not happy with that font size if you think that's too big you could simply come in and change and any item that uses that size will then be updated to the smaller size so here we have a an h2 tag and we've changed that heading to a 30 so it will apply that new setting then to um, the new h2 tags so let's save those settings and now if i uh, add a new h2 tag you will see that the size is a lot smaller than the original size and if I change the font weight now you'll see that it applies it to the bold in the advanced section um, once again you can make any updates that you want so if I make the change here it's not affected on the global palette so that's just a couple of the things that you can look at but there's body text there's links there's width and breakpoint sections you can set the settings for animate on scroll for javascript so there's a whole lot that you can do so we're not going to continue too much there but just to show you how you can then um, make some changes to your website so let's save whatever we had changed 
and let's head back to the front end so there we have that information that we added and if I go back to the home page I can now head over to my WordPress settings and in WordPress I can set a static page so I can look here for pages home and for posts uh, let's have a look which page that might be All right, we need to just go and have a look save the changes and now when I refresh my home page that's what I have and if I want to edit my home page I can go edit with oxygen and I can edit the home page so there's the design set loaded I can scroll down now and I can edit any one of these content elements or I can remove or I can add a new one so if I want to add a new content element at the top of my page I can select add scroll down to the library on the left hand side and here you'll see that we have two items we have atomic and we have design sets if we go into design sets you'll see that atomic is one of the design sets so all those demo sites that we saw at the beginning are listed here so if I want to add content I can simply select atomic sections and elements these are all the sections and elements available to me and as I go down the list I can see a preview of any one of those elements so if I wanted to add a call to action again after this call to action I would simply be able to click on that call to action it would then pull through into my design just below the item I was editing and I can now continue to edit this item if I wanted to change the background color it matches the next color too much I could simply select that and there I've changed the background color to change the link of this um, text link simply click on the button and here I can manually insert a a link or by selecting set I can actually go and choose any page within the website and that will immediately then update the link to that page on the website if I want to have a look at the structure of my page I can hide the left hand bar and here as I scroll down and I select different items you'll see that different items are highlighted on the right hand side and inside that item in a tree view you can see the different content so there's the heading there's the text and then we have the three columns if I want to move elements around very easily just drag and drop and I can move the elements around if I want to move the elements around in the layout easier to close the bread the um, the navigation plus and then just simply select and move it up or down now you'll see that that element has been moved up so very easy to move the elements around and then once again very easy to edit if I double click on this text I can actually enter the text mode and do an edit and if I wanted to highlight those three those import this entire demo site I can quite easily do that and then by wrapping it in a span which is this over here I can now click on that span expand the left hand side and all these options are now available to me so to give an idea of something that you could do for example is you could come in and give that just that text a box shadow so let's give it a red shadow so there we have highlighted just that text inside that paragraph and if we wanted to make it easier to read we might decide we want to give it some padding so there we have we've given it some padding and we were able to quite easily um, edit just 
those few words within that paragraph of text. So that's how much granular control you have over your content when working in Oxygen. Right, so that's pretty much how you would edit each page. And as you complete each page, hit the save button, and then of course you can head back to the front end immediately so you can have a look at your design. Right, if you want to edit the header of the site quite easily, head back to your Oxygen templates. And the way that Oxygen works is it allows you to set a main template. In this case, it would be then for the header and the footer of each page, which is what we will edit now. So we head over into Oxygen. So here we are in Oxygen. Now you'll see that the page has, has loaded, but I can only edit these areas. If I click on the central area, there's nothing that I can, I can't edit anything here, nothing works. But if I head over to the header, and if I head over to the footer, I can edit any of these items here. So typically in a header or a footer, uh, especially in a header, you would like a menu. And here we have, for example, let's have a look in our structure. And you'll see now that we have what's called a header with top line. And then inside that we have some header rows. And each row, that would be a header row and that would be a header row. If I wanted to add a header row, I would select the header with top line and then simply click on add another row. So if I wanted to change the menu that it displays in my site header, I could add or delete the header, or I could head over here after selecting the menu item and then choose a different menu. But I don't have any menu set up within WordPress, so it's pulling through a default navigation. I can also simply change the layout. I could, for example, delete the item either by clicking on the delete button here, or I could come to this uh, tree view and just hit the delete button there. And you'll see that the items then move across. So that's pretty much how you can change the layout. Once again, I can just double click on the text. If I want to add an element, I can add. So let's say I'm going to add an element to the first header row, simply add, and let's add a text item. So we'll add some text. You'll see that it's positioned the text there. If I expand now I, my tree view, I can see that that's the text. If I wanted to position that in the center, simply move it to the row center. Now it appears between the two elements and edit here. And if I want to, once again, I have all the advanced options available to me. What I can also do is wrap that inside a div. So simply by heading over to the tree view, clicking on the lines, selecting wrap with div. Now I've wrapped it in a div tag. So any changes I make are made to the div, not to the actual item. And I could go into save size and spacing, for example. Let's give that some size and spacing all around. Maybe what I want to do is add a button. So head over to the basics and add a button. And now you'll see that the button is appearing underneath the text. I actually want it next to the text. Well, as we've wrapped our element in a div, that's quite easy to do. I can select my element. You will see it says button, which is the button. And if I go to the nearest div tag, would be that div tag or from here I can see button and I can see the nearest div tag and all I do now is stack the child elements horizontally and the button moves over but now you see that they're not aligned and that's easy enough to to fix by saying align to the middle and if I want to put in some space between the two I can head over to that text element and I can maybe add 20 pixels to the right. And I was very, um, uh, very quickly and easily able to format and make that look like it makes some sense. 
So that's just to show you um, what you can do in terms of what content you can add to your header or footer. Any of these content elements, whether it's a basic element or if you want to add something that's a little bit more complex. Uh, for example, uh, there we have the social icons. So the social icons have been added. All I do is enter the URL of that um, social network and the icon is automatically added. And it does offer me the option for a background color for the different icons, or I can use brand colors. And the brand colors are automatically applied. I can deselect and then we're back to uh, whatever color I want for my social icon. So there you go. Uh, that's the same color. I can make it red. Um, any color that I want now, I can apply it to that particular element. But I can also uh, change the layout. So I could change it to a column layout, to a row layout. And then also the link, I could suggest that it open in a new tab because I don't want to close, uh, replace my website with a social page, or if I wanted to, I could do that as well. So all the options I need nicely laid out, and if I'm not happy with the square, I can change it to circles, or I can just go with the icon on its own and leave it blank. So just to show you in the brand colors, so very easy to change. And then of course I can change the size just by doing that. So yeah, a very structured way of approaching web design. And, and then of course, for anybody um, looking to see how this integrates when you set up a new page. So I'll head back to the admin and I'm going to head back to templates. And if I go to my page before editing, you'll see that I have some options here where I can select the uh, design from other templates. So by choosing main, I have now automatically applied a header and foot to this page. So I, I could have more than one main header and footer, which would then allow me to create maybe something different uh, if it's Easter, if it's a special, if it's a sale, if it's um, uh, a new product launch, I could actually change the header and the footer then, change the colors, change the content to promote or to highlight that change. So that would then apply to all the pages that use the page template. So how do I decide who can use the page template? Well, where does this template apply? And inside here, you'll see that I can say, well, this template should apply to posts or pages, to media. Um, some of these won't make sense. These are um, post types, but the, the ones that we'll be using on the front end of the website are generally pages and posts. And I could also select all post types. If I have my own um, custom post types, they will also appear in this list. And then I could simply select, say it was products. I could select products or I could select um, services, testimonials. I could then apply it to um, that particular single post type. If this was a template which applied to a, an archive, which would be the grid view, then I could here select um, which archive it applied to so and which category. So I could literally select a different layout for each category within the new section of my website. And then we have some other. So this one says if it's the front page applied. So if you have a specific template that you want to use on your front page, this is where you can select so that the template would only apply to the front page. You can set up a 404 page search results page, your blog posts index. You can also create your own inner content and then anything that doesn't fit anything else is the catch-all. So if there's no template, it will apply the catch-all template. So basically a fallback position. And then the template priority, you have a choice, anything between one and 10. The higher the number, the higher the priority. 
So if I wanted all pages to use the um, this particular layout for, for the page, I would set say the priority at, at um, five, or if it was set at one. And then if I have a page, uh, if I want to change the layout of the pages with a new layout, I could then create a new layout, change the priority to two, and because it's a higher number, all the pages will then use that default template. On the specific product page, though, I could select to change that to a specific template. So the default will apply to all pages except if I go to a page and specify a different template. So a lot that can be done within the templating, but very quick to create a website that works now because you have all these default pages. They are relatively easy to edit. And if you want to create your own menu structure, you head over to menu. Let's give it a, a name of main menu, create menu. You would then be able to see all the pages that were there. So you can now decide maybe you want to start your menu with a home page. Uh, you want a contact, you want an about us page, you want some features, some frequently asked questions, um, maybe some meet the team, our products, our services, and maybe that's all that you'd like to add, then you would add to menu. Once those items are added to the menu, you can move them around. So you might move the About Us and the Contact page to the bottom. You might uh, want to move Frequently Asked Questions to just before About Us. Or let's put it inside About Us. And you have Meet the Team. Maybe you want to include that in About Us as well. And you want to go with Products, Services, and maybe then put some features within our products. Let's save that menu. And now you want to apply that to the website. So head over to Oxygen. We head over to Templates. We go to our main template. And we can edit with Oxygen directly from the template list, which is uh, quick and easier. So we click on Edit with Oxygen. Now we can head up to the top of our website, click on the um, menu and now you'll see in our menu list we have main menu and apply the main menu and you'll see that the drop down automatically fits if i want to change any colors i could for example go to hover and active and i make i can make the changes here so just as a small change let's change the background um, to the darker color so immediately now when i hover over the menu you can see the difference in the change that I've made. Uh, and if I want to change the general color of the menu, I could come in here and once again, if I make the change, you'll see that it changes immediately. And the reason that didn't change is because that's the page that we're on and that is the active color that has been applied to that menu item. If you want to have a look at your site in the mobile view, easy enough to do here on the left hand side, drop down to the mobile size and you'll see the website uh, changes its shape to fit the mobile requirements. Here you'll see that there are some items that are not um, looking good and maybe on mobile we don't need them. So if you wanted to hide for example, this, this information here, but only hide it on the mobile view, you could then, now that we've selected that breakpoint for that screen width, we can head over to advanced layout, go to display and select none. And now it won't appear in the mobile view. However, it does still appear in the normal uh, desktop view. The item isn't missing. If I go to my structure, you'll see that that item still appears there it is there and if i go into my mobile view 
you'll see that the item still appears in the tree view, but it doesn't appear inside the site. So it doesn't uh, affect then the mobile view in the sense that it's it's not visible. So you have complete control. Maybe that item there you also want to remove. So head over to advanced, head over to layout, go to display, none, and you're done. Right, then you also have the menu for the mobile view. So you'll see that the menu automatically changed. And there we have a nice basic uh, layout for our menu. And under the mobile and responsive settings, you can then select uh, how the menu works. And you also even have an option to include the drop downs inside the mobile view so the user doesn't have to scroll in into pages but they can actually select any of the pages available on your website from one inter interface and then you have the menu styles so here again the different colors and then um, the icon size so if i wanted to make that bigger i could and I can change the color. So let's head back to the full view. And if I'm in the back end of my site and I want to see what it would look like, I don't necessarily have to scroll to the front end. I can just hide the sidebars and click on an empty area. And now I have a pretty good idea of what my site's going to look like even though I didn't go and view it in the browser. So pretty much what I see here is what I'm going to see on the front end. So we can save those changes. The moment I save the changes, they are, they are updated. I can then head back to the front end. And there you can see that those changes have taken effect. And if we quickly inspect, let's move this bar to the right hand side. Let's change that to the mobile view. You can see that those items that I added don't appear. There's my menu. And you'll see the content has been formatted for mobile. But you have complete control over that content in the mobile view. So if I head over to edit my page and I select to edit with Oxygen, and we head over to that page inside Oxygen, you'll see that if I select that content area and I head over to my mobile view, you'll see that I have complete control now over what this looks like. So if, for example, I looked at this section, I might head over into the size and spacing and you'll see it has a default setting there of 20, but maybe I want to make that zero. And because it's on the mobile view, I want to make that a little bit smaller. And I want to do that to this section as well. I can quite easily then come in and make those changes. And if I feel that, you know, I don't want to make all these changes all the time and I want to maybe create my own styling class, I can of course do that. And let's enter a class name and we'll just call that um, mobile class. What I can also do here now is copy styles from here to another. So let's add that class. And let's copy that to this class. Now those settings that I made at, at the before I introduced the class have been set. So that means that if I scroll down here to this section and I add my mobile class, you'll see that immediately it applied those settings and removed the border. So if I go to advanced here now, I go to size and spacing, you'll see that it was naught on the side and it applied the 20 to the top and the bottom. Similarly, if I head over to this section uh, that has been applied, if I head over to this section, for example, and I apply the mobile class, you'll see that the border is zero and the has been set to 20.
So that's how easy it is to move a class between sections. And you'll see that on mobile view, that hasn't made any changes because I applied that at the in the mobile view setting. So anything at the normal desktop view is unaffected, even though that mobile class has been applied. So with the mobile class applied, if I make a change to the desktop view, so in my desktop view, I also change that to 20. That would now apply the 20 to um, the desktop view. If you see that it's not applying, we head over to our section and we'll just remove the ID settings. And now the you'll see that the 20 has been applied and the same now on mobile. If we don't want that style to apply anymore, what we can do is head over and now you'll see it goes back to the previous settings. And if I go back to my mobile view, you'll see that that has changed as well. So that's how easy it is to make your own styles and do your own updates um, on the page. So it takes a lot of um, a little bit of tweaking to get the 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 idea of all the possibilities, but it's really that quick and easy to make a website. Simply install the the demo site of your choice, head over to pages, and you can start editing those pages to fit your products and services. So if we have a look at the um, products page, so our products, we're going to edit that with oxygen. Right here we have the page loading. So immediately I know that I want to in include my own products into this content area. I go and have a look at my structure and I go and see how that text, that page is made up. And from what I can see is that there's no image here, which means that the image is a background image. If I head over here to advanced and background, you'll see that we have an image there. I'm going to select browse to head over to my media library. And you'll see that the images used in the template are not loaded into my media library, which means that I don't have a lot of images that don't belong to me. So I can come in here now and insert my own image. And I don't have a whole lot of images loaded on my server that I don't want. If we scroll down to this section here, you'll see that this div has an image. So this image is not in the background. This is actually a normal image. To add an image, it's very easy. Add image. And I can add an image. I can then delete that image. And I can set my own image. And if I want that image to display in the center of this page, I can simply do that. So up until you have your product images loaded, you can use these um, demo images. Yeah, just like a placeholder to get an idea of what your page will look like. So very easy then to create your own um, uh, layout with your own product images. And then, of course, with your own text for your products and services. Once you're done, save. And then back to the front end. And you'll see that whatever you saw inside Oxygen is available on the front end. So I hope that just gives you a quick idea. The install and to get going is very quick. And then it's up to you to go in and edit your page to look and feel the way that you want. So I hope you enjoyed that brief overview. Um, there'll be more videos coming with more detailed um, demonstrations. Thank you for watching.